InshaAllah always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu ta'eef wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahad and but for the grace of Allah that we are in existence and our life, yeah those mics have to be turned off, this one otherwise we'll pick up all the echo. Our life is many different realities and and secrets from only Allah's teachings that open every type of ni'mat and barakah and blessing. And somebody was making a comment, I guess they were new to the channel and said that, how come this talk on this reality has 4,000 views and 100 comments and likes? And went on further to describe and that's a tariqah reality. That why are there 4,000 people watching the video about a Muhammadan haqqaiq and not 4,000 comments thanking that my love for Sayyidina Muhammad and a reminder from our teachings and Mawlana Shaykh's teaching, Pharaoh did many things wrong and Nabi Musa kept asking Allah to destroy him, to bring down his authority and to finish him and with every test and every difficulty and every trial and tribulation upon Pharaoh, what finally brought him was na shukri, to not be thankful to Allah Not his guna and his sins only because Nabi Musa kept saying, destroy him and then horrible tests would come, horrible difficulties would come. And they're teaching what destroyed Pharaoh in which Allah said, Bas it's enough, he's, he's finished, his nation is finished, is that he was eating and he had a habit always of taking the crumbs and finishing everything. Shaitan said, what kind of Pharaoh are you that you eating like that when you're you know king of kings? Take it and wipe it off the table like that, throw it on the floor. And as a result of throwing Allah's ni'mat onto the floor, Allah said, that's it, his time is finished and his kingdom ended. And the azab came upon that whole nation. Our life is about adab and this outside man is wondering, this is a school of manners, you're teaching Muhammadan realities that nobody hears these things. Why aren't there at least 3,000 likes if 4,000 watched it? Not even 3,000 appreciated it, liked it, commented on it because everyone always thinks someone else will do that, let someone else do that. But you don't have to worry about somebody else, we all have to worry about are we showing Allah in every action of our life that we're thankful? We're, we are a people whom only complain and criticize. Somebody will say, why was this in the video, why was there like a, a mouse in the video, we don't have mouses or whatever ridiculous comments. He said, from this whole haqqaiq all you could find was this ridiculous issue, my goodness how bad your life must be. If you can hear a haqqaiq and find a problem and something in the sound, the echo, the production and you miss the whole forest, the whole beauty. And there are people whom they love it and they never click to say anything of a shukr to show Allah that they're content, that they're happy. Thank you for guiding me Ya Rabbi because if you're not doing it with this haqqaiq you're not doing it in any aspect of your life because whatever you do, you do in everything. If you're a shukr and thankful person, you thank Allah in everything, Ya Rabbi thank you for this ni'mah, thank you for the food I have, thank you for the car I drive, thank you for the pay that you give to me, thank you for the health of my children, even they're not healthy thankful for the condition they're in that they didn't go worse. Even it's not enough money it could be worse, everything can always go down. 
And Allah the Qur'an said, thank me and I give you more. So then Allah's criteria is be thankful. Thank Allah Ya Rabbi thank you I got this knowledge. Thank you I love Sayyidina Muhammad and I got to hear something about the love of Sayyidina Muhammad If you're kind enough to be thankful to the video, thankful for the broadcast, thankful for the people whom putting all of this together and struggle and sacrifice every day to be of service. Then you'll carry this teaching from this teacher into a thankfulness for everything you do. Thankful for the work you have, the pay that you get, thank you for the children you have. Mawlana Shaykh used to say, don't ever complain about your children, Allah will take them away. You'll have a house empty with nothing to complain about. But take their clothes when you wash it and kiss it. However they're bothering you, alhamdulillah they're here and that noise and that bother adds the whole flavour and fruit of my life. For if Allah should listen to you and say, I love you and you're complaining about them, i just take them out of your life and how everything would be so regretful. And that's the sign of, of barakah in life that when we're not thankful there's no barakah in anything we do. And that man was right that I'm looking 4,000 views and nobody commenting, so why did they watch it? Or they all said, well somebody else will comment and say something nice, I, I'm too busy. And then that goes back to the talks we've had before, why Allah ask you to make your shahada? Why are you entering into Islam the first pillar is to make your shahada? Allah knows what your faith is or what it's not. So why is the first usul to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluhu? Why? Allah doesn't know what you believe, He's the one who gave you belief. To even say that on your tongue, you can't mention Allah without even Allah's permission. So I don't allow them to mention my name in their homes. So Allah knows that He's giving you permission to mention it. But he wants you to mention and you to hear. You hear what you're saying? And every time you recite your shahada, do you hear what you're saying? There is nothing but Allah and Muhammadun Rasulullah is the messenger of Allah nothing in my life. There is nothing in my life of any importance other than Allah and His beloved Sayyidina Muhammad So it's so important that Allah make this First step into the entryway of Islam is repeat for yourself every day. Even call the azan out loud, why? To repeat to yourself the words that you're soon come to success, come to success, come to prayer. You think you say, nobody else is in the room, later you'll learn, oh there are angels in the room, there are jinn in the room, there are many mu'min beings in the room. But you didn't know that at first. But Allah wanted us to recite it to remind myself that don't leave me to myself for a blink of an eye which Allah said, don't leave yourself to yourself, hold that I am supreme Allahu Akbar, that you are supreme in everything and I'm nothing. Come to prayer, salah. Come to success, that without praying there's no success. Without Allah's support nothing can be accomplished. Whatever deficiency we have, whatever sins we have, whatever difficulties we have, the only thing saving us is good character. You can have a mountain of sins but you put a heart and say, I love Sayyidina Muhammad thank you for this video. And Ya Rabbi shukr, thank you. Not the man with the beard, we don't care what he says. But I thank Allah that you gave me this ability to see this, to hear this and to increase my love of Sayyidina Muhammad And I make a vow and I'm going to do that. And I have the best of character 
We said, what saved the magicians of Pharaoh with all of their evilness, all of their wickedness that nobody could kill more than them. You couldn't do enough crime on this earth to compare yourself to what these magicians were doing. They would peel the skin off of people in punishment and torture. You can't imagine who they were and what their, their, their amal was. But when they came in the presence of the Messenger of Allah Nabi Musa and they merely asked in Ayatul Qur'an, Ya Musa you throw or we throw? You throw or we throw? They showed a respect and an ihtiram. They showed a respect for a Messenger of Allah And then there's no scholar even talks about that. That that key, because the rest of the ayah doesn't make sense. How as soon as Nabi Musa, they threw their magic, Nabi Musa said, you throw, you throw their magic. Their magic became big huge demons. He threw his asa and immediately they believed. Why would they believe? When Allah says, anyone who sees miracles says, this is nothing but magic. Throughout Qur'an. So don't do miracles because anyone who sees miracles they say, this is but magic. Why didn't those sorcerers say what normally they should say, this is magic like our magic? But they took their shahada because they had a, they had a respect, Allah opened yaqeen in an instant. You can have a mountain of sins but if you have good character and good adab it's but one second. That Allah open your heart because the next event they witnessed what Allah wanted them to witness. They witnessed the light of the heavens on this asa and that this is not from their magic, this is a creature from heavens they're seeing. As a result they said, that's it, there's no God but God and Nabi Musa is the messenger of God. And Pharaoh got angry, who gave you permission to breathe? to believe before I tell you to believe. Who? Rabbil Allah. Because these are His creation. So then tariqah is all about that one adab. So when they want to know what is adab, what do you say your parents are learning, what are you talking, these people talking about manners. The whole of Qur'an is based on that reality. Ask them, how did the magicians of Pharaoh believe in Nabi Musa and believed at such a yaqeen, every year we talk about it, at such a level of certainty that Pharaoh said, I'm going to quarter you, I'm going to cut you to pieces on a cross, I'll pull all your skin off until you repent from what you did. He said, whatever you do to us, in Allah Musa Rasulullah. They went deeper into the yaqeen. Yaqeen that most people if you would scare them at that time they say, we're sorry we, we recant our belief we don't want to, I'm not going to put my hijab beard, I'm not, not I'm Muslim, I'm not Muslim anymore, I'm going to hide my, my Islam. What kind of belief they had? So, whatever you do to me, I'm with Allah So tariqah comes and teaches that everything is based on manners. If outside people are coming and see that, where's the manners if this is such a school of manners? Why 4,000 people watching and but a hundred people are, 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 are giving a comment or saying, great, then the other 3,900 must be in a difficult life and no difficulty will be solved, no rizq will come, nothing if, if, if we're not showing thankfulness to Allah and if you think thankfulness to every aspect of your life but not to the Muhammadan reality then definitely your coordinates are mixed up. That's why the tariqah comes and show with the Muhammadan reality show the highest of respect. Train yourself, discipline yourself, you will carry that as a Muhammadan ambassador into everything you do. You kiss your father's hand, you talk with respect to everywhere you go because you're an ambassador of Muhammadun Rasulullah and you exhibit the best of character so that Allah always feels, I'm very happy with this servant. 
Whatever condition I put the servant in always has the best of respect and best of character. And as a result every faiz and emanation begin to move to that servant. These are the nights in which to be dressed and blessed by these good characteristics. Our life is filled with demonic presence everywhere. And the demonic presence urging and agitating people towards anger, towards impatience, towards every type of bad characteristic so that to boil them and as a result make all of humanity to attack each other. This phase that's coming is the humanity attacking each other. And they are just merely avatars and puppets of demons that are all around and all circumambulating. And the only thing that destroys them is the good characteristic. But no matter how much they push for the bad always flip back towards the good characteristics. And these are all the emails that are coming in, so how I'm like this. How's my rizq like this? How's like this? And all these emails then you're thinking, oh these, none of these people are making comments on the videos. They watch it, they took it, they get an email, they get a text from the shaykh, not a single reply back, not a thank you back, not a shukr back. Where's the manners for everything? So then tariqah comes and teaches everything is based on good manners. We pray that Allah open the reality of this manners and this adab, this ihtiram and this respect. That is the door that opens everything, every blessing. For what does Allah need any of your salah? Say, oh I pray a lot, pray a lot but you have manners that are not correct, they're not soft, they're not polite. What Allah needs that salah? Then people don't understand, they say, oh he's shaykh saying don't pray. No, he's not saying that, he's saying that your prayers we're trying to point out to you, your prayer has no value to Allah. The salah itself is big deal, who cares? You're praying with money in your pocket, thinking of your bank account, thinking of every type of filthy thing you looked at, you think Allah is impressed by this salah? But if your prayer made you to have good character and someone yell at you and you go back to being peaceful. Go back to trying to make peace. Allah loves the peacemaker whom continuously trying to put everybody back, not to let people to burn in their own anger and their own ignorance. What muslihoon, the one who makes peace within his family, within his community, with himself and with his Lord in every aspect of his life, this good character is what saves us. When Allah is happy, He opens the heart, angels come to the heart, every fire comes to the heart. People email and say, how do I tell my parents that instead of praying to you I have to pray someone else? And then my parents ask, well, why are you not praying to Allah? I say, what the heck this guy's learning from the channel? What do people hear when we're teaching all these teachings? We ever told anyone to pray to anyone other than Allah's of a this is the school of immense, immense perfection of all the usul and laws of Islam. Pray and worshipness is only for Allah But when you do something wrong and you're an oppressor to yourself, Allah he didn't say pray to someone else but ask Sayyidina Muhammad to make du'a for you. So they're getting lost in interpretation of words, you pray only to Allah you go, Allahu Akbar and you're praying to Allah And at the end of your salah, Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum, you make a du'a, Ya Rabbi help me, Ya Rabbi grant me your istighfar, Ya Rabbi grant me a najat, Ya Rabbi grant me from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that he take my case. And that He intercede for me for all my wrongdoings, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem as you witness to what I'm asking, what I'm in need for, intercede for me, Shafi'un fiha. That through you grant me your intercession Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, Ya Habibul Azim, 
take my case to Allah that's called du'a. Salah is only for Allah Du'a, you're asking Prophet pray for me, intercede for me and take my case to Allah And in dunya if you find somebody who's Muhammadiyoon, you ask them also, make du'a for me to show that I'm humble person, make du'a for me that Allah grant me a najat, grant me a salvation. And all of tariqah comes to teach that reality. It's only worshipness is only for Allah But we are the people of immense barakah looking for, we're looking all our life for barakah. That's why we talked the week before. Sayyidina Zakariya in Qur'an is teaching us all his life he prayed and he's a Prophet of Allah in charge of their temple, their most holiest location. Ninety-nine years his du'a wasn't accepted, he went into a maqam of a woman and in the maqam his heart was, was clean enough to see there's a miracle here. Immediately asked Allah Ya Rabbi by the grace of this miracle I'm seeing, as soon as he was making du'a Sayyidina Jibreel appeared before him, your du'a is accepted by Allah So locations can be holy, you're not praying to the saint at that maqam but by the virtue of being at that maqam and what that saint has been dressed with by Divinely Presence Allah is there. Why? Allah said, I'm with Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. And that's the best of company. So it means the light of Prophet must be at these maqams. The light of Ashab and Nabi, Ahlul Bayt and Nabi, all awliya Allah fi samai wa fil ard because they're following Sayyidina Muhammad And who, who's with them? Allah's with them. So there must be immense lights there. So if the maqam of Sidna Maryam was holy, what about the Muhammadiyoon? You just enter the maqam and your du'as, of course they're all accepted by Allah and those only Allah are interceding and asking Allah Ya Rabbi they may be not having the same maqam, grant them, grant them what they're in need of, not what they want. You may want something that harms you, grant them what they're in need of Ya Rabbi, mostly grant them the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that light to reach them in their qabr because they may ruin it in the dunya and shaitan may steal it from them but it's held in a reserve as a trust. But when you pass from this life say, that maqam you visited, that wali you visited, here's the lights he's bestowed upon you. Medina that you visited, here's the lights of Sayyidina Muhammad they're going to be bestowed upon you. You think these things are lost? A grain of rice Allah said is not left from this accounting. Imagine then the visiting of these holy maqams. What lights will be dressed upon us? Why you want them here for shaitan to steal them? You need them on Yawm al mashar when you raised and petrified from what Allah going to be accounting with. And Allah says, here are the gifts from all these maqams and all your belief. And these awliya are dressing you and upon all of them now Sayyidina Muhammad is dressing you from these lights. We pray that Allah give us good character, days of difficulty and these ifrit and shayateen are everywhere. Making everybody to go crazy, everybody to be angry, everybody to be in difficulty. Our only salvation is good manners. Keep showing as much as you can everywhere and everything the good manners so that Allah save us. Save us from a sickness coming our way, save us from any type of difficulty coming to ourselves, to our family, to our children, to our community inshaAllah. That Allah dress us and bless us for this holy month and these holy nights and days inshaAllah. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi Surat al-Fatih. Click the link now to subscribe.